Where's Vicky? She usually helps. I want you to learn how to do this yourself. Uh, Larry. Oh, hi, Ted. Come on in. I uh, just looked at Clint Buchanan's new test results. Any surprises? I'm afraid so. Do you know uh, Mark Benson? Yeah, he was associate chief of neurology here a while ago. Yeah. I asked him to consult on Mr. Buchanan's case. I hope you don't mind. No, of course not. But if you feel necessary to bring in Benson, what do you suspect? Um, why don't you read the test results first, and we'll compare assessments. Uh, you'd uh, better cancel Mr. Buchanan's release from the hospital in case I'm right. Oh, boy, he's going to go through the roof on that. If you feel it's necessary. Yes. Let me check this out. At this rate, a man could starve to death. Come on, don't give up. You know, you're making a lot of progress. Progress? It took me ten minutes to butter the bread. But now you have it buttered. It so. doesn't matter. Of course it matters. I've got a full staff at home, damn it. If I need more, I'll hire them. They can help me. Help you? Help you. Is that really how you want to spend the rest of your life? Do you really want people fussing around you all the time, worrying about what you can and can't do? Do you really want people rushing in to dress you and feed you, lead you around from room to room? And what about your children? They'll be required oh, to... Oh, that's another thing. That's stuff. another thing. My kids can take better care of themselves than I can take care of myself. How do you think that makes me feel? It makes you feel bitter and angry and impotent and worthless. You got the picture. But you don't. Not yet. You see, Mr. Buchanan, you have to learn a lot of the same tasks that your children had to learn. And yes, there will be frustrations. I don't need any more of this Mickey Mouse stuff. This Mickey Mouse stuff is important. Unless you don't care about being completely independent. Is that it, Mr. Buchanan? Is that what you want to be? Helpless? I was about, uh... 10, 12 years old at the time, and uh, I was out to corrals watching, watching the cowboys work with some unbroke horses. And my dad rode up, madder and a hornet, because one of his top bronc busters had run off with a waitress from the Dairy King. And Pa had contracted to uh, sell six horses by the end of the month, but they had to be broke horses. I piped up and said that, uh, that I'd do it. Well, he just looked down at me and laughed and said he figured that I better uh, stay with the gentle stock a while longer before I started working with the Bronx, that breaking horses was a man's job. But you felt like it was a put-down? I, I thought it was a challenge. And I, uh, I thought I was man enough... Uh, to do the job, and I decided to prove it. So when he rode off, I caught up one of those horses and um, got a saddle on him, and then I got in it. <laughs> I pulled, he took about two jumps, swapped ends, and unloaded me. I mean, he stuck my head in the dirt. <laughs> and it hurt so bad, made my eyes water. But I, uh, got back up and I got back on him. And you know, at the end of three days, that horse would stand when you got on him, turn both ways, and he knew what woe meant. And Pa saw him at the, uh, at the end of a week. I still had a hitch in my get along, but the horse was moving real good. But the look of pride on my daddy's face when, when he saw him, well, it, uh, it made it all worth it. I mean, it was awesome. Anyway, I kind of uh, figured that with this little predicament I'm in, that uh, it's kind of like having another uh, unbroke horse on my hands. And I'd like to um, tame him. Only this time, not to, not to get my daddy's approval, but... Well, I'm the head of my family, and I'd like to, uh, 
feel that my responsibility was to not only take care of my family financially, but also emotionally. And I don't want my kids worrying about me or being afraid for me or feeling pity for me. So if, uh, if you could help me gentle this horse, then that'd be real good. But if you can't, then we're, we're both just wasting our time. You learned how to ride a gentle horse before you learned how to ride a Bronco, right? Right, right. And you learned how to walk before you learned how to ride a gentle horse, right? Right. So those are the steps that we have to take now. Miss Gordon... I know it's not what you want to hear. Believe me, I know how difficult this is for you, but it's the only way that makes any sense. You're going to understand that in a day or so. I can't guarantee you any overnight miracles, but if you work with me, I'm going to have you back in that corral with the Bronx, and you're going to be the man that you were, and more. But you have to do it on my terms. Your terms? You haven't heard a word I've been saying, have you? To hell with your terms, Miss Gordon. I've gone through my whole life doing things on my terms, and I'm not about to change now! <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Buchanan? Are you afraid to go out into the corridor and find your doctor? Is that some kind of a dare, Miss Gordon? I was just wondering, because if you are going to have me fired, I'm just going to get my few things and, uh... It worked, what you told me. About finding the door by feeling the breeze from the corridor. It really worked. I know a lot of little tricks to help you navigate, but, uh, they're not exclusive. Any therapist you hire can teach you these things. Well, do you have some trick that'll uh, get me back to my bed without my falling flat on my face? Your grandmother is the one responsible for my being held in that Zaroon prison. Patrick, that is not true. It is the truth, Kate. One that I have tried to protect you from. Grams would never do anything like that. Oh. But anyway, what would she have to gain by having you imprisoned in Zaruna? Oh, all you? not much. Just more money, prestige, power, that's all. Here's what to do when you don't find the rainbow in this time. Here's where you go when it looks like the rainbow in. Don't cry. Yes. Do you know what time it is? Yes. You said you wanted to see Clint. Visiting hours will be over pretty soon. Yes, I know, Donna, but we're so busy. Yeah, look, look. Just... It's time for my judgment day in this establishment. Just... I want you to go and let me handle everything. Hopefully by the time you get back, we'll still be open, a riot won't have occurred, and the help won't have quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will do just fine. And I'm going to take you up on your offer because I have not seen Clint yet. And I want to go over there and just remind him how much we love him and give him a great big hug. Yeah, give my best too. And, yes. and, and see if I can visit tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow he will be home. I want to order a CAT scan for Clint Buchanan, Dr. Walk. As soon as possible. Tonight even. You think it's possible? I think it's probable. All right, let's see what the facilities have available. Boy, I hate to do this to Clint, tell him he's not going to go home tomorrow. He's already demoralized enough. Hello, yeah, this is Dr. Woolick. Uh, can we schedule a CAT scan this evening? All right. Where do you think your bed is? It's over there. I know that from the nurses showing me to it. We come in the door and just go slightly to the left. Correct. Where's the bed tray I banged into earlier? It's at one o'clock. So if I go straight ahead, I won't hit it? That's right. Of course, you certainly wouldn't hit it if you had a cane in your hand. No cane. No cane. 
put your hands down at your side, a little bit out in front of you, you're going to have a better chance of feeling an obstacle. All right, it's just that in my head, there's a wall everywhere that I'm just about to bang into. Oh. Well, did I do good? You accomplished your objective? Now, how many steps did you take from the doorway? I don't know. Next time I want you to count them. Well, why didn't you count them and, and tell me? Because I thought it might occur to you to do it. Well, it didn't. I'm not used to having to count my steps. Well, you've never had any need to before, have you?